guys, welcome back to Linda Vista Live. I am your host, Franny Esparza, and as always, my co-host, Mr. Jose Quinones. Saludos. Saludos. <laughs> and our guest today is Juan Cantu of I Love Bad Art. Welcome, Juan. Me. Thank Welcome, you. brother. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me here. Yes, absolutely. Perfect choice of uh, attire. <laughs> I love bad art. Promo uh, walking promotion. <laughs> Actually, I have nothing but shirts that say this. Nice. Either black or white, like this one. <laughs> I need to start doing that with my own business. Just have only shirts that say my business name. That's right. It's perfect. Perfect advertising. That works. So, Juan, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I reached out to you because I follow you on Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. and I think that you, you're very um, artistic you know everything that you post and there's always a meaning behind it and yes. I love art myself so I invited Juan to, to come and join us on Linda Vista Live. So Juan what actually led you down this path? To art mm -hmm. or I've actually been an artist my whole life I just never really fully accepted it. I, can, I mean since I was little um, just like every kid can draw and paint and you know, in kindergarten, things like that. Eventually, you start going up and you start comparing your stuff to somebody else's, mm -hmm. and you think, oh, mine's not good enough, so you just kind of quit. Yeah. That's kind of what happened with me. Um, eventually, I, I ended up going to the University of Delaware. I was an English major there uh, with a concentration in creative writing, and I saw that as art. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't really feel like I needed that degree in art, so I ended up dropping out. Mm -hmm. um, when I dropped out, I came back to Milford right before 9-11. I ended up joining the Army uh, because of 9-11. I uh, ended up deploying, um, got out, and I was diagnosed with PTSD. Eventually, um, I tried every kind of treatment for PTSD, uh, medication, therapies, and nothing worked. I finally read a story on veterans who were being um they were it was like a mask project it was an art therapy thing and that's the first time i heard veterans who were successfully managing their ptsd so i decided i'd ask my va provider whether there was art therapy available for me and there wasn't in delaware i had to go to philadelphia mm -hmm. i live in milford philadelphia is too far yeah uh, that same day i came home I decided to just uh, go to a um, art store. Uh, I discovered art supplies were really expensive. Um, and then I was wondering maybe, like there should be an arts and crafts thrift store kind of thing. And I kind of started doing that, thinking I wanted to collect things and hopefully people wouldn't have a financial barrier to starting art. Um, I started doing that. Eventually, I had so many art supplies, so I figured I'm just going to do art on my own. Yeah. Um, and I started doing art on my own, completely having forgotten that I actually thought of myself as an artist before. Mm -hmm. um, and everything felt so natural to me. Everyone was like, whoa, you're pretty good. You're a natural. And I thought the same thing myself. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I realized I, that's actually been me my whole life. I just had forgotten about it, I guess. It was just the emotional, I guess, trauma from uh, the actual deployment, like just completely made me forget who I was. Mm -hmm. um, most people never actually gained that back, and I was fortunate that I actually did. Mm -hmm. um, so here I am now, five years later. Yeah, uh, and that's like a, a, um, very, very different, but for a lot of people, they can relate to that because a lot of people end up settling for your corporate nine to five job, you know, and and doing what they're supposed to do and kind of forgetting about what their passion is. Mm -hmm. And in your case, it was art. And then you've also found your way of, you know, being able to deal with your PTSD through the art. So that's that's pretty amazing. That's a pretty amazing story. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> hey, Juan, no were there any resources that helped you along the way? At the time, um, I was hoping the VA would have been a source, but it wasn't. Um, I eventually found social media. Um, and a lot of artists from there, a lot of entrepreneurs on social media. Um, so I just kind of picked everyone's brain on there somehow. I would ask people personal questions um, and a lot of them would answer me. So I, I started kind of developing my own confidence. I started just doing, you know, um, 
I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any resources that helped oh. you along the way? Yeah, basically there was that. It was a social media for me. Okay. Um, there's a lot of inspiration. That's the first time that I've heard that yeah. in the show. That's awesome. It's like um, they say like strangers sometimes root for you more th more so than people you know. So yes. was that the case for you in that? Actually, instance? yes, because I, I asked some a few people who were artists if they could kind of mentor me. And both of them said that they didn't think I needed it. And I'm like, well, I'm asking. So I kind of feel like I need it. And then I, that's when I just started looking for, you know, uh, other people on social media basically yeah. so yeah you I have a, a, a lot of followers and a lot of people that always comment on your you know including myself you know as far as like your artwork and very different and a lot of the meanings that you give it so it, i think it's pretty cool uh what do you think you know obviously a lot of people go through hardships in life and you, like i said before some people lose their passion um what do you think is the biggest reason that people fail or give up on something that they're really passionate about i think think the people compare themselves a lot mm -hmm. like you kind of measure yourself up to someone else's success yeah. and especially social media that's a lot of it is kind of fabricated so you really can't compare yourself to how someone's doing at the same time mm -hmm. um, so I don't do that and for me art is strictly for me like I don't actually do it for someone else I actually when I make art it's I have no expectations. Mm -hmm. I don't really think about what it's going to look like at the end. Yeah. I just want to go through the process itself. Uh, I think that's where you um, you grow personally, like just going through the uh, the process. Mm -hmm. And that's why I actually call it bad art because I don't want it to to have like a. I don't want to make it seem like it's going to be, or I want it to be perfect. I actually. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not worried. That's the last yeah. thing I'm worried about, perfection. Um, There's no set standard. It's kind of just whatever flows out of you at the moment. Yes. Nice. So, so do you remember, like, when we first met, we were at the, the bike shop. Life cycle. Yep, and you were, well, I did, I, I had done a pr uh, workshop there, but mm -hmm. then during, I have one of your original pieces, remember? You were selling the little squares <laughs> with bad art on it. But, yes. To this day, you know, I got it wrapped up because... I know someday it will be worth yeah. a lot, brother. Yeah. You know, that whole bar, bad art, when I think about that, that's you, man. It works. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for you. What is your unique skill, superpower that has helped you uh, build your art? Um, luckily, I think I'm, I actually think I'm abnormally creative. Um, intuitive as well. I, I, I think that I was definitely born with that. And I have, um, and again, I just, it was, I had been an artist my whole life. I just hadn't accepted it. Like I didn't want to, especially as an artist, a lot of artists are seen as sensitive and I didn't want to be seen as that. Um, being a Hispanic male, <laughs> that's not really yeah, yeah. something you want to, um, but I, I mean, that's how I ended up. Once I accepted myself, I was, that's what I did. So you kind of harness that creativity and that, Yes, and you owned it. Yes, nice. it's all me. <laughs> nice, very cool. Now, what do you wish that you had known, you know, back then? Um, I kind of have an idea of what I think, but yeah. what do you wish you had known back then that you now know and you're confident in now? Well, well, uh, person. Well, the thing um, that art doesn't actually have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. That was my. I initially thought. I mean, most of the art you see is perfect. It's perfect people and perfect mm -hmm. fruit. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that's how it has to be. Uh, eventually, I started seeing other artists who didn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, my own daughter, she she used to make little zombie eggs. <laughs> and I thought, like, that actually looks pretty cool. I wonder if I could do that. And actually, that was the first thing I ever did. I copied her, a five-year-old. Nice. Wow, man. nice. That's pretty cool. Her name's Emmy, by the way. Her name's Emmy? Yes. Nice. A big shout out to Emmy. Thanks for the inspiration. <laughs> and to the rest of my kids, uh, Sebastian, Marlena, Emmy. Nice. I have two bonus kids, nice. Alexis and Mackay. Okay. And two bonus grandkids, Journey and Nirvana. <laughs> Very cool. Nice big family. Yes. So what is your um, favorite quote saying that you live by? I have my own that I think I developed over time. Um, 
And it's basically nobody was born to make me happy other than me. Mm. Like that's I like to burden someone else with your happiness. It doesn't. I mean, that's like a lose. Say that one more time. Man. I kind of when I tell my kids, it's like nobody was born to make you happy except for you. Mm -hmm. Like that just. Yeah. You know, you don't want to burden someone else with that responsibility. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and if we all knew how to make ourselves happy, I think it would be a perfect world. Mm -hmm. um, I think, like, when I first, the way I kind of made myself happy is that when I fully accepted who I actually was, like, my authentic 100% who mm -hmm. was me. Once I accepted that, everything feels like it's, yeah. you know, uh, icing on the cake. So... That's very true. And you'd be surprised at how many people do depend on other people's, you know, yes. approval or, you know, validation to be happy. So getting past that and, like you said, Yo, being your true self, that's awesome. That's Thank some, you. Mm -hmm. that's some <laughs> badass stuff. Right there, right there. That's what's up. I, I learned that the hard way. That's, that's, what's up. that's the basic thing. I mean, I was. Congrats, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I. Even learning that, like, I'm actually grateful for all the trauma even that I've yes. experienced. Yep. Uh, it's made me who I am today. Um, that was, you know, I, I can't believe I would actually even think that a couple of years ago. Like, mm -hmm. I'm actually grateful for everything that I've experienced because of it's led me to this. Yeah. So, and I'm happy. I mean, that's the. Definitely. I'm not, <laughs> and it's all on me. I'm, you know, I'm the one who's responsible for that. And that's what I do. Very rewarding. But I think that was it, brother. Oh, I appreciate it. I think thank you for being on the show. I yeah. we appreciate mm -hmm. you, what you represent, who you are, and what you have to offer the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I thank you so much for joining us. This has been awesome. Now you were telling me that you are uh, actually just recently joined DAC. Developing Artist Collaboration, Artist Collaboration yes. West Rehoboth. Yes. So people can find some of your artwork there online. Tell us a little bit about where people can find. They do a, a summer market uh, every week, and eventually I plan on um, being a part of that and selling my art there. Nice. Um, Facebook, Instagram, you can reach out to me there and at, you know about anything art-related. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And we'll tag you once we um, post your, your video. We'll tag all of your, your handles for Facebook and Instagram so you can find I Love Bad Art by Juan Cantu. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for more episodes, go to lindavistalive.com.